Welcome to the Karen Kenny Show. This is the place where we take a no bullshit look at life's little lessons. Here, together, we find the spiritual glory in even the most wicked hard story. This is a journey from fear back to love and how we can find our greatest strength and happiness in some of the most unlikely places. I believe that if you're willing to change your mind, you can totally change your life. So, are you ready to rewrite your story and choose to live free? Let's do this. Hey, you guys, welcome to episode 84 of the Karen Kenny Show. And today we're diving right in. <laughs> Today's show is going to be a little bit different because we're going to be talking about um, a documentary called The Social Dilemma. So that's the name of this thing today, The Social Dilemma, but it's also the name of a really powerful documentary on Netflix that I highly suggest that everybody watches. Now, before I go any further, Father, I just want to say this. I never am here to tell you what to think. I am here to encourage you to think for yourself, to do some thinking, to do some critical thinking, to, I'm always like, look, take in content, take in the sound of my voice, listen to what I'm saying or whoever you follow or like or content you read or whatever, that's great. But at the end of the day, you have to decide for yourself what feels right and true for you. I will just say this, I highly encourage you to go find out what you think about The Social Dilemma, the documentary. So let me just tell you a little bit about it. It's really about um, the effects of social media. And what I thought was interesting about it, it is a combination of like a, a typical documentary where it's like real time interviews and stuff like that. And it's mixed with like, it's like a hybrid, like a drama hybrid where they have scenes that are kind of like acted out to further illustrate the points that they're making during the interviews. Um, and it's in those scenes where there's kind of that, like um, they're trying to, like I said, like dramatize, like the effects of what they're talking about um, of social media and these platforms um, like, like um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, TikTok, all those things and Google. And that's what they kind of dive into. And so it's a series of interviews with like engineers, the engineers from Silicon Valley who design the platforms and the technologies. Um, and it's, it also talks to like, there's some psychologists that they talk to. Um, and they also talk to some tech experts and like writers and stuff. And it's, it's a really, um, I think, kind of like broad spectrum of different people they talk to. Um, and it's basically talking about how the various social media companies like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google, et cetera, have manipulated human psychology, how they are currently have and continue to <laughs> manipulate human psychology and have tried to rewire humans' brains um, through like um, addictive algorithms through, um, you know, dopamine, um, giving us dopamine responses to things. Um, and what they're really talking about is how all of this stuff, this artificial intelligence, these algorithms, these, these platforms, the designs that they've done, how they are having uh, dire consequences on humans and society and et cetera. Uh, and it's really, really, man, <sighs> It talks about how, it talks about how, here's the thing. I'm going to say, I'm going to say some things about, um, probably you will hear some of my opinions kind of come through on this. Uh, but, you know, I always say, you don't, you don't take my words and make it the gospel truth for you. You got to decide for yourself. I'm just going to kind of share with you, like what my experience was as I was listening to these people. And one of the things that they were talking about is how um, they know that these platforms were designed to take advantage of users. And now it feels like um, things are starting to backfire. Like for example, like when they created the like button on Facebook, the guy who was the head of monetization at Facebook was saying, you know, you know, we created that like button. We were just kind of thinking like, oh, what a nice thing right? Somebody posts something, you can be like, oh, I like that. Or how, how it'll be nice for somebody to see that they've gotten a like, 
right? They were kind of coding this in this happy, happy kind of thing. And he said, but we didn't stop to think about the opposite side of it. We didn't stop to think about the dark side of it, about how people might become addicted to getting those likes in the way that they would kind of shape themselves or morph themselves or whatever, the content that they would post just to get the likes. And also how not getting likes on something you posted would have a psychological effect on people on too. So he was kind of coming from this point of view that they hadn't really thought about it the addictive quality of it um, and what it was doing to people um, psychologically and in their brain and stuff like that. And then another guy said, oh, we actually knew exactly what we were doing and we did it anyways. And that's the part that was just kind of like, you know, there are moments throughout this film where I, I get like, I feel like my hackles go up. I say like, you know, I, I, I really, <laughs> it's just my nature. I'm, I really do not like to see injustice, inequality, unfairness, um, bullying, manipulation, like any of that bullshit, like it just get, it just like, mm, I just feel it in my body, like viscerally, I get like, ah, oh, right. So I'm watching this thing and I'm like, oh my God, we were like sheep to the slaughter, man. When they were designing these things, they purposefully, and I don't think this is going to be big news to everybody, that they were purposely designing these platforms um, to manipulate us to take actions and to do things that they wanted us to do. Um, but when you dive into, um, when you dive into it more deeply in this documentary, there's a few things that are, that are quite, quite, quite disturbing. And so they ended up, so one of those things, right. And like I said, I don't want to tell you too much because I want you to go and have your own experience. But one of the things that they were talking about is um, they could not have predicted um, the effect that this would have on the levels of anxiety, depression, and suicide rates, especially in young women. They, right? they weren't thinking about the consequences of these platforms on teenagers especially. But the anxiety, depression, and suicide rates of young women since, since the um, introduction of these social media platforms um, is up over 300%. So that was kind of like getting punched in the face. That was not soothing at all to, to learn. And all of these main engineers, these like big wigs in Silicon Valley are now on this documentary because they feel guilty. They feel bad about the monsters that they've created. And one of these guys, I think he's one, I, I want to call him Tristan, but I think it's Tristan or something like that. Tristan Harris. And he was a big wig over at Google. And he ended up leaving Google to create the Center for, uh, the Center for Humane Technology. Because he's talking about, like, he could see, he could see, like, the problems that were being created, the addictions that were being created. Like, even the way that Google delivers your mail to you in your Gmail inbox, it's designed to keep you kind of, like, looking and checking and checking and checking. That's what, like, push notifications and stuff are all about, right? They design these things where they're trying to get you um, to behave in a particular way. Because what they're doing is they're trying to get you through their artificial intelligence, right? The AI, the algorithms that they've built, which by the way, they don't even know. Like even the guys, they admitted. One guy said, there's maybe like a handful, like three dudes, right? Three people who understand how these algorithms that they use actually work. And then another person said, and even those people don't really know how they work. It's like creating, it's like, you know, Frankenstein, like they create a monster and then it gets loose in the town. And they're like, I don't know what he's gonna do. And they're like, but you created it. It's like, yeah, but we thought it was gonna do this. The thing about artificial intelligence and computers, right? It's not like a human, like this thing just keeps getting smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter. So they're kind of like, yeah, we don't even really understand how they work. So now they have this thing like they've set in motion that's having ramifications and effects that even they can't fully understand. But one of the things they were talking about is the way that they try to create addiction and manipulation in the human psyche is um, by doing like gamification things. So if you've ever been on a video game and it's like, if you just hit the cherry or you just kill that guy, you get the points, you get extra, whatever, blah, 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 blah. These things of gamification where you get rewarded. And I see it being used more and more and more, you know, in um, Facebook groups 
with um, entrepreneurs and coaching or whatever, everybody's starting to use these artificial intelligence things to try to get you um, to get a good hit, right? To keep you in the group or in the platform or using the product or whatever the thing is. And some people just say like, hey, this is the wave. This is the future of marketing. I think it's wicked manipulative, not really a fan. Um, and maybe I'm just too old school and it's maybe it's why my, me and my personal brand will never be huge or whatever. Um, but I just can't, I just don't. And I know it. I know that I use social media. I try to, I always say it like this. I know it's a fucking game. I know it's a fucking game and I'm trying to play it in a way that actually feels ethical and right for me. And there's certain things that I don't want to do. There's certain things I won't do. I'm not judging people who do. It's just not for me, you know? But when you watch this show and you kind of see how stuff is broken down, I'm not going to lie. It's a little horrifying. I mean, there were a few times I was like, man, I just want to huck my phone up the woods, you know, behind my house. I want to like, I want to throw this thing in the, in the trash can right now. I'm like, I just want to huck this phone in the garbage right now. Cause you're starting to watch it. Like, it's like, so like, you know, you might have to resist the urge to immediately delete all your social media accounts or maybe don't like, maybe go do it. I can't, you know, only you can decide for yourself, you know? But one of the things that I found like wicked disturbing is, um, that they, I understood that they like track your progress, right? Like I, they track your behavior, not progress. They track what you're doing online. And I remember the first time that I experienced this in my own life where I was on, um, I think I was on the Converse website and I was looking at a very particular pair of chucks. Uh, they were vegan. They were like whatever they were. And I was like, mm, and I just, for whatever reason, I didn't put them in my cart. I didn't finish the sale, but I had looked at them for a good amount of time, probably at least 10 minutes. Um, you know, cruising around the website, whatever. And, I, and those caught my eye. And I remember like shutting that out, like doing something else and then going on Facebook. And all of a sudden an ad for those exact sneakers came up. And it was the first time I was like, fuck, is Big Brother watching? Like, this isn't a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences, right? I think that there is a divine intelligence that is at work, right? I, I always say spiritual team on the job. I'm not intuition, instinct. I'm not talking about that. This was clearly man-made intervention. I was like, oh, these motherfuckers are like tracking me. They're watching me. I thought it was so fascinating too that my alma mater, BU. So BU, you know how like back in the day you would get like things in the mail from different societies, like wildlife societies or whatever. And in order to, they, to guilt you, they do used to do it by mail. They would try to guilt you into donating because they would ahead of time send you a calendar or they would send you a uh, roll of like address labels. And you would immediately be like, ah, they're giving me this thing for free. And you felt the need to reciprocate. It's all, it's all, you know, psychology. Like I understand, I understand how it all works. Right. So not that I'm so smart, but I just know, I, but I also have the ability to have the feeling and then to stand back and ask myself what's really going on here right now. Right. So when BU Boston university sends me an envelope in the mail asking for a donation, right. But what they send with it are like stickers to put over my camera on my computers, like webcam little covers so that people can't spy on you. I'm like, when my school, like I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm like, they're sending me now these things to like put over my camera so people can't see into my home or whatever. I thought this is so fascinating. And it's just showing you. They wouldn't send those things if somebody somewhere didn't think somebody was watching, but they are watching. So one of the, one of the little things in the episode on, in the documentary is one guy said, oh yeah, we track you all the time and we track your behavior because we want to sell you targeted ads and we're trying to induce your addiction. So they watch where you are online. They watch what you're looking at and they track how long you look at it. Think about that. They know where you are online, what you're looking at, and how long you look at it. Because everything is designed to keep you looking. So if they know this about you, and this is how I know, I know they're watching me, because every time I go on Instagram, at some point, usually immediately, all of a sudden in my feed will come up a dodo. 
the dodo, right? The dodo does all these stories, these happy feeling, good stories about dogs being rescued, kittens up a tree, ducks in a drain, somebody's helping the animals. They've got my number. They punch my ticket. They know I'm going to probably stop and watch that sucker for three to five minutes, right? It's no mistake. I know that they're watching my behaviors and my habits and my patterns, and they're trying to design an experience online that's going to keep me engaged because at some point, they're going to try and sell me something. And that's the whole point. They are selling you. They are trying to manipulate your psychology, your behaviors. And it goes deeper than that. It goes into the political side of things. It goes into the divisive and polarization side of things. So again, I'm going to highly encourage you that you take the time to sit your ass down and watch this thing so you can decide for yourself. But because it's really just about education, right? It's about educating yourself. You have free will. You can decide what to do. But on some level, you also have to understand that they are, the guy said, we literally have created things. You can't see me. Those of you who listen and don't watch the show and just PS, you can watch. I, don't, I mean, some people just like to watch me sitting up in my room talking, but you're welcome to watch the show. Um, and the guy was doing the thing, the scrolling thing where you swipe the finger up. He goes, we have literally designed things to keep you scrolling. And that's the whole point of like push notifications. It's the whole thing of the experience, the gamification experience, where if they're trying to get you to do a particular thing, they send things into the algorithm, whether it's an ad or it's a notification that somebody you know is close by or like all the, all the ways that they fuck with you. <laughs> P.S. Right. It's just, it's just unbelievable. There's like personalized recommendations. They're trying to keep you engaged. And the more time that you're on their platforms, the more times, more eyeball exposure that they have for the ads for the companies that are paying them to basically keep you engaged. And Facebook will fight back and push back and say, well, we have advertisers on our platform because then it keeps it free for the people. It keeps it free for the people. But what you're paying with is your time, is your peace of mind, is your happiness, is your attention, is your quality of life. It's not fucking free, people, just so you know. You might not be paying in cash, but trust me, you are paying in some shape, way, or form. So we get to decide, right? What's my level of participation going to be? I have people in my life who don't have social media at all. My Menta, if you listen to the episode with um, my beautiful friend and Menta, Andre Debus III, He's never, he says, I've never tweeted. I've never twatted. I've never had a, 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 an Insta chat. <laughs> he's so funny. <laughs> he doesn't even have, he's never even had a smartphone. He had a flip phone and he recently lost it. And he's like, my life hasn't changed at all. So there are a lot of people who just don't participate in it at all. My sweetie's like this close, a hair's breath away from getting rid of all his social media too. Right. So it's just, it's just a really, really important thing, you guys, that you go and make a decision for yourself. And I thought it was also interesting when they were talking about how, you know, so many of these programmers, you know, one guy said, I don't let my kids use social media. In fact, I don't even give them a phone. My kids don't have a phone. And if they do have a phone, it's only enabled to make phone calls or to send a text message. One guy, one guy said, and this was just like, oh my God fascinating. One guy said, I had to write a program to stop me. He's like, I had to write a program to stop myself from using the programs that I created that I know are addictive. So he got addicted to his own product and he had to write a, a, a friggin' computer program to keep him from being able to use the thing that he actually created that all the masses are using. And it goes on and on and on. Again, like I said, I want you to go and have the experience for yourself. But one of the things that um, really that I did not know, I mean, I understood about the data mining, how they mine all this information about you. I, I had, a, I had a, um, you know, a layman's understanding of the manipulation of the technology, the gamification, you know, that I assumed on some level that they're watching, but I never understood. I'm like, how do they do that, right? Um, but after watching this, I was like, holy shit. But here's something that I did not know which has, plays a very big role in the experience that we are having right now, especially as we're coming up to the, uh, 
election in November. They were saying that if you live, let's say they use New Hampshire, if you live in New Hampshire and Google a particular, particular thing, it could be anything, right? Whatever. But let's just say it's a, it's a, um, a candidate or some, something that you read or want to know more about. You Google in New Hampshire versus you Google in California, you will get different results based on where you live. And they will often start to feed you things that basically play into the belief structures that you already have. So they're not trying to show me things that might get me to think differently or to expand my mind or to change my mind or to see a different point of view. It's almost like kind of being on some level spoon fed what you want to hear. So it creates this kind of like extremism. It creates this polarization. Same thing that happens on the social media platforms. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about that and I'm like, oh, and they make a really good point. Remember how I said this is a documentary, but there's also these drama, dramatization pieces where there's like these acting moments and you see this whole thing get played out. This is how people go down rabbit holes. This is how people get sucked up into conspiracy theories, right? This is how people kind of like, when you look around and you're like, I don't know. He always seemed like a wicked spot guy. And now he's talking about X, Y, and Z, right? Because they talk about how it's so easy to go down the rabbit holes on these platforms. And it made so much sense to me about like some of the things that I've seen going on. So depending on where you live, you're going to get different information. And they asked two of the guys specifically, so what do you think is going to happen with this incredible divisiveness and this, this polarization that we're seeing happening, especially based on the way that people are getting their information online. And one guy said, I think we're gonna have a full on like civil war. That's his greatest fear. He's like, we're gonna have a civil war. And another guy said, you know, if we don't get it together within the next 20 years, it's gonna totally destroy our civilization. <sighs> So it's, it's an important piece of, um, call it whatever you want, call it docu, you know, a, it's, it is a documentary. It's a piece of filmmaking, it's storytelling. And I think it's really worth your time to go and watch it so that you can decide for yourself what role, how you want to interact with this stuff, how you want to use it in your own life, how you want to use it if you're an entrepreneur in your own marketing, how you want to use it if you're a parent who has young kids that you like the mind, like the brain is so malleable, especially in the younger years. <clears throat> and I see people who like, we all know somebody and it might even be yourself. We all have some, I shouldn't say all, most people have some level of addiction to these things. There are some people who are just like, they go on for 10 minutes, they drop their own shit and they get off, right? Like Gary Vaynerchuk, if you guys know who Gary V is, he always says he's not a consumer of other people's content. He drops a ton of his own content and all he's paying attention to is the comments in his own shit, right? <laughs> I'm sure he's got other people tracking what's going on so he stays hip and in the know. But you know, there are a lot of different ways to use social media. And I think it's important that if you're gonna use these platforms with all this AI, with all this stuff that we don't even understand the way that is manipulating the brain, we got to be smarter about it, right? We got to be smarter about it. And, you know, I have friends who take social media breaks. You know, one of my things is, and I've, you know, I've, I've talked about this. I'm determined to figure out a way. Um, I think that I'm able so far to do it in a way that feels, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? in alignment with me. Like I've tried to use it very specifically. doesn't mean I'm still not being manipulated on some level. Um, I know people, you know, I know that there are marketing techniques that I could employ and use to try and get more followers, more friends, more fucking money, like all of it, but I'm just not interested. I mean, I really am like, there's gotta be a better way. That's how I feel about it. There's gotta be a better way. It's not going anywhere. So this isn't me outside the castle with my torch, like saying, burn it all down, right? It's not, it's like, well, it's here and I'm a solutions oriented person. So I, I like to say, well, doesn't matter how we got it. It's here now, it's ours now. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do with it? How are we going to interact with this thing or not? So 
that's what I got for you today, you guys. This is me just giving you a gentle nudge, a little nudge <laughs> to go do your homework, to go check out the social dilemma because it has become a social dilemma. We are seeing such separation and divisiveness and hatred and malice and fear and scarcity and insanity, you know? And look, I always talk about it like, you know, in the work that I do, in the work that I do, and I talk about this a lot, how, you know, I'm a Course in Mir long time A Course in Miracles um, student. Um, some people call me A Course in Miracles teacher. I always kind of just be like, well, I'm more like a guide. I like to think about it that way. I'm navigating around it. But, you know, it tells us that our natural inheritance is peace and happiness. And so my job here, you know, and it, and it tells us just like it tells us in other spiritual traditions, you know, you are the light of the world. So my job as the light of the world, it's not to deny the darkness. It's not to ignore the darkness. It's not to turn away from the darkness, but my job is to, I always say like, my job is to turn on the light, to, to bring the light to the darkness, right? Or some people say, bring the darkness into the light. But I, I always feel like it's about shining a light. It's not about turning away from it and ignoring it. But it's also for me about transmuting it and transforming it. And to not fighting what is, but to create the possibility and the miraculous, like what's possible to create the kind of world that we want. So it's really about transforming this. So we've got these tools, like what are we going to do with them? How are we going to purposefully and personally choose to interact with them? Can we do it in a way where we don't get lost? And I don't hear, I, I don't, I'm, I'm being dead serious. When I trace my mind and I track my mind, I don't think I've ever heard somebody say, oh my God, I feel so much better about myself when I get off of Facebook or when I get off of Instagram or when I get off of whatever. There are people who really know how to use the system, Facebook ads, the out, like there are people who know how to work the system, but not once has somebody said to me, it has improved my overall peace and happiness. Not fucking once people. So I'm just saying it's an opportunity to discover for yourself what you think. And I want to, I always say the purpose of my podcast, one, um, is to have a way to connect with you guys because I love you and I love getting to have, and, it, and I know it's more like a one-way conversation, uh, but a lot of you do actually write back and comment back, which is a blast. And I appreciate that so much. Really so much of this is about, you know, you know, as Tolstoy says, and you've heard me say this a bunch of times, you know, at, A-A-T, at is transferring feeling from one hat to another. So when I do this podcast, I'm trying to transfer some feelings from my hat and mine to, to out. And then, you know, it lands wherever it's supposed to land. So it's a way to connect. It's also a way for me to offer free content uh, for people who um, might need it or might want it or who might want to work with me uh, in some capacity, but don't, you know, have the budget for it yet, yet, right? Um, I, because I believe, I believe that we can all um, expand into the dreams that we have and the stuff that we want. Not just about working with me, I just mean like in general. Um, so it's a way for me to provide free content and support and love for my brothers and sisters out there who, who might want it or need it or be interested in it. But it's always under the, 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 um, the umbrella of either, I would say, it's to, to educate, elevate, enlighten, or entertain. And this is more an educational one. Um, and so the tone is maybe a little more serious because like, I don't, when I learn this stuff, I'm just like, okay, this is fascinating, right? Like I'm wicked curious. I love to learn this, but I really resist, you know, my sweetie and I were like laughing about this because he's like, man, you really, um, you know, like don't like to on some level be told what to do. And I would say like, yeah, like ever since I was a little kid, I'm like, you're not the boss of me. But I think it's because I spent a good deal of my life in my younger years where it didn't matter what I wanted. It didn't matter what I thought or what I felt and stuff like that. So as I became older and I had a voice, I, I always, you know, I often talk about like finding your voice. It's not necessarily finding your voice, right? It's about using your voice. We all have a voice. It's just whether or not we feel safe enough to speak up and to use it, or we start to choose to use it. Um, and I say, but I don't resist authority just for the, for the sake of resisting. I'm not just like, like an, like a, you know, a pissed off rebel who's just like, no, 
I'm like, I'll do shit if it makes sense to me. If you can explain to me why I'm doing it and it feels good and it feels aligned with the divine, if it feels resonant, but I'm not just going to do something because somebody else told me to do it. So this is an invitation. I invite you to go and watch the documentary. And I would love to hear what you think. Um, Cause I just found it really fascinating. And I just felt like, yeah, I gotta, I want to talk about this because I want people to know, um, you know, and it's got to move beyond the information. Once we know, we got to do something about it because to know and not yet do is to not know. And I thought I knew some things about social media platforms, but um, it is a greater dilemma than I realized. And so um, we've, we've got our work cut out for us moving forward, people. <laughs> we really do. Um, so keep an eye on your kids, especially keep an eye on like, and just watch for yourself. You'll see. You'd have to be like head in the sand to not notice that you look something up over here and then all of a sudden somewhere on your social media accounts, right? So Google is definitely like all the data that they are mining, all your behavior, just keep in mind, right? One of the, the final things I'll say about this and then I'm going to go is that Tristan, the guy who created the thing, he was saying, uh, the Google, Google guy, he was saying something like, I might botch it, but he said something like, never before has like 20 to 30 young white men had so much power, so much effect on like 2 billion people. And there's a scene where it's like this hand with strings on it. And it's like, it's like all these strings dropping down to a human being. And it's like this puppet imagery. And that's what it is. You had all these young white guys who are wicked smart, who are basically, and they admit it, manipulating, doctoring, like um, creating addictive behaviors. They are literally trying to change your psychology. They're trying to change how you think, what you do, and who you are. And it's costing you. And always remember, they tell you it's a free platform, but that shit isn't free. You've got some skin in the game somewhere. You are like, what do they say? You're paying with a pound of flesh somewhere. And I just think if you're going to do it and you're going to be involved with that, you should know what, what it is. It's like, don't go into it blindly anymore. So if you guys, if you go and watch it, hit me up, send me a DM, let me know your thoughts on it. Uh, I would, I would love to, uh, I would love to hear more and decide for yourself. Keep an open mind, just kind of go in. And, and I just kind of went in and I was like, interesting. And I'm like, I said, just be prepared. You, you might feel the urge. <laughs> you might feel the urge to go and delete all your social media accounts. Woo! All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you so much. And I love you and I'm grateful for you. And to everybody who sent me birthday wishes, thank you. You, you guys, you just don't even know. You don't even know how much it touches my heart. So thank you for that. Uh, wherever you go out in the world, please leave the people and the places and the animals and the environment better than how you found it. Wherever you go, may you be a blessing. Bye. Hey, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Karen Kenny Show. <laughs> I super duper appreciate your time, friendship, and support. And look, if something that I shared from my heart today somehow landed in yours, I'd love to hear about it. So please tag me on Facebook or Instagram or IG stories or wherever the cool kids are hanging out these days. And let me know what your favorite part was or what you found most helpful. You can find me over at Karen Kenny Live. That's Karen, K-E-N-N-E-Y-L-I-V-E. -E. And if you're digging what I'm saying and you want to hear more, I'd be wicked grateful if you could go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a review. Because you guys, that's how you'll help me to keep spreading the love. And if you can think of someone that could benefit from hearing this episode, please share it with them. I'd also love to stay connected with you. So if the feeling is mutual, please go to karenkenny.com backslash freebie and download my free guide to building your spiritual team. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, keep living in the fearless flow. Know that I see you, I appreciate you, and I love you. And wherever you go, may you be a blessing.